Hello, you two. Welcome back. This is our science lesson for today. Now, we're looking at hygiene and we're looking at can I show why it's important to wash? Now, this is a lesson carried on from an experiment last week. So, what experiment did we carry out last week? Here's a bit of a clue. And you can see me. Oh, that person looks familiar. However, that person over there, or it might be that person over there if my camera's flipped, that person over there has got more hair than I do. So, What's that person saying? What were they saying? What was the experiment they were doing? Well, that crazy science guy was doing an experiment all about investigating and collecting bacteria and what happens when we don't wash. So let's find out what happened. So we used, this is our experiment uh, equipment list. So we used some Petri dishes filled with agar, and this is what they looked like, isn't it? They were the, the plastic dishes, and they had the jelly in them, the agar jelly that went, meant we could grow the bacteria on. We had clean cotton buds. We had some objects to collect bacteria. What were the four ob items that we swabbed for bacteria? So what were the four things that I did my experiment together with you? What were the four things that I swabbed with my... Um, with my cotton buds, I think I've got one here. With my cotton buds, what were the four things oops, that I swabbed with my cotton buds to show that there was bacteria on them? Can you remember those four things? And I've got a purple word there. That's a key word, swabbed. And I've shown you what it is there. It's like when you, when you wipe something with a cotton bud, you swab it, okay? Which means you collect that bacteria. So what were those four things? Talk to you, Teddy. What were those four things? Well, those four things that we swabbed were a TV remote, a phone, a door handle, and my laptop keyboard. Those were the four things that I chose. Now, why did I choose those things? Well, the reason that I chose those four things, well, you can talk to your Teddy first if you want to have a guess, then pause the video and come back to me. So the reason that I chose those four things is because I show these items because they're getting used a lot and I know that they're, they are not getting cleaned often, okay? So things like a phone or a TV remote, you don't often clean those things. You should do, you don't often. Now, things like a door handle, maybe a laptop keyboard are also things that you might forget about cleaning. You might clean the kitchen counter often or the table where you eat at, but you might not clean all the other things. Now, let's go on. So here's what happened. Now, it's a little bit disgusting, but here's what happened. I'm going to be honest with you. The experiment didn't quite work. As you can see here, these were all of the Petri dishes that I had. Now, you might notice that cardboard box looks a little bit wet. And I've got my kitchen roll underneath. Now, what happened was we had everything set up, the agar, the jelly, and the bacteria was all on. You close the box and you keep it in a warm place. However, if you keep it too warm, the jelly melts, because it turns back into a liquid. And because the liquid then starts to expand because it's, it melts, basically it started to expand out of the Petri dish and it started to overfill and it spilt outside of my sealed Petri dishes, which meant it started to go everywhere. Now, that might seem like, oh, it's just a bit of a mess, but it's quite dangerous, actually, because we were growing bacteria in there. Bacteria can be very harmful for you if you do not wear a mask or use gloves. Now, because this bacteria with on the jelly had spilt out into the box, it meant that bacteria could technically be in the box and nearly in the air if we didn't have the box lid closed which meant it was dangerous for me if I was to then put my fingers, having a look at which ones were which, I could have it on my fingers, I could then put it near my face and I wouldn't maybe be very well after that. So to protect myself, I had to be safe to make sure that I had to get rid of these as quick as possible because the experiment had failed, something had gone wrong, but it was now not safe. So I had to get rid of it. But before I did, I took some quick pictures to show you what it looked like. Now, as you can see here in this red circle, that is the start of a growth of bacteria. So you can see that bacteria or the mold here was starting to grow. So the experiment failed and went wrong.
But actually, there were some bits of it that was right. We knew that the jelly was right. We knew that the swabs were good because we can see the bacteria starting to grow. The one thing that went wrong was it was too hot. So in future, if I was to do this experiment again, I know what I'd change. So I've put here, sometimes science investigations or experiments don't go the way that we always would think. Sometimes they go a bit wrong. However, that's absolutely okay, as long as we learn from our mistakes and we make it better next time. So I went and investigated what should have happened. I've, I've done this before and I know what should have happened. So I went to want, I still wanted to show you what it would have looked like. Now, this is what it should have looked like. So I've got some pictures here. Now, you can see inside the Petri dishes, you've got these little blobs of colour. You've got some greens and whites and yellows and you've got some browns. And then on this one, you've got some whites and yellows and peaches colours. Now, these are all different types of bacteria. And you can see that what we call them is we call them colonies call them bacteria colonies and you can see that this one is a different looking one to this yellow one down here which is a different looking one to this brown one over here and these are all different types of bacteria and th on this on this plate you can see that they've there's at least three four maybe even more different types of bacteria all growing in different areas and this might have all come from one swab so you can see that even though it's just one swab of maybe a phone you've got different types of bacteria that's all living on that phone. And if it's given the right environment, which is the right temperature and um, the correct jelly to sit on, then it will grow. Now, let me show you what it should have looked like. So here, I've got some pictures. You can see this picture here, you've got a line going in, but you imagine there's a line going in between the top three and the bottom three. The top three are all the different types of bacteria that were found on three of the things that were not clean. So you can see a door handle here that wasn't clean, hands that weren't clean, and a TV remote that wasn't clean. Now you can see the dirtiest one there, the most bacteria filled one there probably looks like the door handle or the hands. The TV remote has some on it, but the door handle or the hands look like they've got the most bacteria growing there. I then, what I did, in my experiment, which didn't quite go as well, but it shows the same process here. This person has wiped down all of those three things and then taken another swab after they've wiped down or cleaned them. And you can see the change here. The door handle, even though it's got some bacteria on, it has got nowhere near as much bacteria as the top one. The same for the hands. The hands have nearly got no bacteria on them. Now, we never have no bacteria. There's always something there. But you can see there's very, very little bacteria there in comparison, which means um, indifference to this one up here. The one at the top is much more dirty than the one at the bottom. And the same for the TV remote. After they've cleaned it, you can see there's, lot, there's much less, uh, much fewer, sorry, um, bacteria colonies. Now, the most important one is that hands one. Now, why, just talk to you, Teddy. Why do you think hands looks like to after it's been cleaned looks to be the one with the the fewest or the less the least sorry the least bacteria on this one in comparison to the other two? So why do you think hands are cleaner than the door handle after it's been cleaned and the TV remote after it's been cleaned? Why do you think the hands look cleaner? Why do you think that? Well, if you've had that discussion, you might have said something like, well, maybe you've washed your hands better. Well, actually, that's the right answer. A door handle, you'd only ever wash. You could maybe use a wet cloth and some hot soapy water, but you'd usually only ever use maybe an antibacterial wipe or something like that. The same for a TV remote. You wouldn't ever use hot soapy water and a, and a dishcloth on a TV remote because it's electric and you wouldn't want to damage the device, which means when you use your hands, you can use that hot water, you can use soap and you can scrub properly getting in between all your fingers on your thumb, wash, washing your wrists and washing in between on the back of your hands as well. You can wash your, your hands and yourself very, very well. 
you can't always wash the things around you very well. So it's always really important to make sure that even though there are things around you that might not be as clean, if you can make yourself really clean, then you've got a better chance at staying healthy because you're more likely to put your hands near your face than you are to put a door handle near your face or a TV remote near your face. Certain things like phones are good to clean down because they go near your face. But a lot of things we put in our hands, so it's always important to make sure our hands especially are very clean. Now, it's important to make sure you wash because otherwise this bacteria will start to form as it has done here and it can make you very unwell. You put that bacteria in your mouth, you're not going to be well. So this is your task today, year two. I want you to design a poster explaining why it's important to wash. If you're a challenge one, I want you to include the words bacteria, soap and wash. If you're a challenge two, I want you to include the, the words bacteria healthy, wash, soap, and germs. If you're a challenge three, you must include the words bacteria, healthy, soap, and germs. But you need to also include conjunctions, so and because, to explain your reasons. Now, it's quite difficult to imagine what I'm looking for without me showing you. So let me show you what a good one looks like. So here I've got a the germs are all around us. Stay healthy, wash your hands. And I've got lots of pictures of things with germs on. And you can see even on the hands, the hands look like they've got the most germs on because they're touching all the different things. And that's the really big message behind this is that your hands touch lots of things and you are the one that can keep yourself clean by washing and showering and making sure you are keeping yourself healthy. And I want you to create a poster to show people around you how important it is to stay clean. Now, using your words that I've given you for your challenge, you need to explain in your poster why it's important to stay clean. Here, they've just said germs are all around, all around you. Stay healthy, wash your hands. They've not said why germs aren't good for you. They've not told me what germs are. They've not said that germs are bacteria. They haven't told me how I can stay clean other than wash my hands. What does that mean? Why is washing my hands important? Remember, we said warm water and soap and wash were some of the key words for some of us. Why were they important? What, do, what does warm water and soap do to the bacteria on your hands? Now, you have to remember that information is not on this poster. So this poster isn't a perfect example. I need you to try and make the best poster you can explaining why germs are something that we need to clean and what germs are and using your challenge to make the best example. I look forward to seeing all your work on Tapestry and I've let all your teachers know to expect it. Thank you very much, Year Two. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.